Hello, everybody. Just want to make sure that we are officially streaming on Facebook and do. Looks like we are good to go. Um, welcome to Health Coach Tip Tuesday. I am Jess Del Pinos, FDN Course Advisor and Social Media Manager. And this week I have Jennifer Woodward, who is our Course uh, Association Director. <laughs> How are you doing today, Jennifer? I am really good today. How are you, Jess? I'm great. So this <laughs> week <laughs> we're going to be talking about tapping into ancestral health with your clients. Uh, make sure you follow us throughout the whole show because we are going to be sharing with you a fantastic gluten-free diet handout that you can start using with your clients right away. Um, and we're going to show you how to use it. So we're going to share it on the screen, show you how to use it. Um, if you can't stick around to see that, make sure you tap, uh, drop the word tap in the comments below and we'll go ahead and send that directly to you. But if you want to see how it's used, how FDNs use it, how you can use it in your practice right now, um, then make sure you stay till the end of the show. And again, this is Health Coach Tip Tuesday, where we talk about tools, tips, and resources for health coaches every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So let's get into it, Jennifer. Um, we are going to talk about not just ancestral health, right? That's a huge topic when it comes to health coaching, but how FDNs can really use that and utilize it with our philosophy, right? Yep, yep, for sure, for sure. And hey, everybody, I see a Ceza there. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I, I am Jennifer Woodward. I do run our graduate association, but I'm also an FGN. So I went through the course in 2016, um, and I just fell in love with every principle that functional diagnostic nutrition taught me. It changed my life, and it is changing the lives of many of my clients. I love getting to take what I learned here and sharing the wisdom with people. One of my all-time favorite um, gurus is Dr. Weston A. Price and his dying words where you teach, you teach, you teach. And so that's something that I'm super passionate about and I'm sure many of you are passionate about too. Uh, and one of the things I love teaching my clients is just a breakdown of, of like ancestral living. And I don't want to make it too complicated. The question that I'm known for asking and probably my clients get sick of it is I say, what would your great, 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 great grandmother do? Like, what would she eat? How would she move? How would she sleep? Your great, 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 great grandmother was not getting up and going to Orange Theory at 30 in the morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she wasn't staying up till midnight because she didn't have LED lights in her bedroom. And so when you start filtering, you know, everything you do, everything you eat, everything you, you know, think about the ways you spend your time and your money and the ways you move, you know, kind of through that ancestral lens. I'm not talking like Cro-Magnon, and I'm also very familiar with the, the idea that, you know, our ancestors died of disease. Um, I'm not like, you know, uh, you know, looking at it through rose colored glasses, but really our ancestors did not suffer from the chronic illnesses, the metabolic chaos that, you know, Western men and women and children tend to suffer from today. And so, like I said, just that's kind of like my starting point with my clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what a great starting point, right? To really get to know yourself and look at your ancestry. I know one of the things that you and I for the show was um, just body literacy. And mm -hmm. all of this really leans back to knowing who you are and what better way to get to know yourself than through your ancestry. Totally, yes. And, you know, that is something I ask clients too, like where where's your genetic heritage from? What's your, what your cultural background, your lineage? that can inform, you know, again, what digestive enzymes you have, right? We can take that into the 21st century and you can correlate it with some of the functional labs we run, like the metabolic typing tests and the GI map. If you're not eating a diet that's optimized for, for your own body's biology based on generations of your ancestors, um, you're going to, you're going to, you know, drift into that state of metabolic chaos. And so, um, Jess, you and I talked about, yeah, you know, being aware of your body's natural rhythms and cycles and asking your body, what does it need? You know, we, we are, we're just distracted these days. Uh, most of us were, we're busier than we've ever been. And so many of us just suppress the cues that our bodies give us. You know, we don't sleep when we're supposed to, we don't move when we're supposed to. Most of us can't poop when we're supposed to, you know, there's so many things that, that Western modern living has really 
um, really, really suppressed for our own natural instincts that it's kind of hard to get that back. But if you can take a little bit of time and really bring it into your practice, you know, your wellness practice to start being attuned to your body, listening to its cues, picking up on them, and then, you know, honoring your body, meeting those goals, um, you can really start to move the needle on your health. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I think sometimes we don't realize how easily we can help clients in doing that by just stepping back and creating a pathway for them. And FDN's gotten a really good rep with our philosophy by using something we call DRESS, right? DRESS for health success. And that stands for diet, rest, exercise, stress management, supplementation. Now, of course, our ancestors didn't have supplements, but <laughs> the rest of what we uh, talk about can really kind of lean back to this um, ancestral health, ancestral diet, ancestral movement, um, just by going through those five different areas with any client make can make a huge difference. So I'd love to go through those with you and see kind of how you would work with a client really looking at it from that lens. 100%. And I love that you brought that up. That dress protocol is something I use every single day with my clients. It, it informs my practice because it is so powerfully rebalancing for the body. Um, and, and everyone wants the sexy diet, right? Like, just tell me how to eat. Give me like the diet handout and I'll do it. And I will tell you guys, we do have a diet handout for you today. Okay. Um, but really I tell my clients, you know, we're working on dress and there's five components of dress and diet's only 20% of what we're working on. So of course you want to eat a healthy diet for your body, but don't neglect those other four principles of wellness because they end up being, you know, more important really than diet. That said, if you're looking at things through an ancestral lens, um, you're going to want to ask yourself that question. What did my great, 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 great grandfather eat? Um, you know, if your ancestors ate it, it's a whole food and it's good for you. And I tell my clients too, a whole food, you know, the definition of a whole food is a food that has one ingredient, which is itself. You know, there's two ingredients, three ingredients. That is not a whole food. Your ancestors probably didn't eat it and it's not contributing toward your health and wellness. So, um, you know, a way to kind of bring that into the 21st century is to focus on things that, you know, don't have some of these newer kind of like ingredients um, and, and problems that those bring. For instance, gluten. You know, I, I think that you you can't go to any restaurant or any grocery store without being offered something that's gluten free. So this is a really big win for wellness, you know, in Western worlds because um, everyone is gluten free now. So it's not a big deal. But some of our clients still struggle with the specifics. Well, how exactly do I practice a gluten free diet? What actually has gluten in it? You know, and then you can take it a step further and think, oh, my goodness, my shampoo might have gluten in it. You know, my postage stamps might have gluten in it. So, um, you know, you, you, you can get a little bit more into the weeds with some of these things, but just start with that, you know, simplicity of, of an ancestral diet focusing on reducing the gluten. Does that kind of make sense? Oh yeah. And I think that's a huge thing, right? Like when you think gluten-free diet, you think food, or at least most people do, right? They're like, Oh, right. let me find this, you know, this piece of, uh, whatever food and let me just check and make sure if it has gluten and you might be really attuned to that. But I think as we learn more, we're starting to see that, you know, it's in our hair products, it's in our uh, food storage, it's in, you know, uh, our environment, it's, it's all over the place. And even if you get something from a restaurant that says that it's gluten free, you also have to consider that maybe everything on their menu isn't gluten free. So if you're really reactive to it, it could cause an issue if they're making the food in the same area where there is gluten. So there's a lot to think about with that specifically. Totally. And on that note, Jess, I feel like it's a good time to like chime in our ancestors. They looked at food as fuel, right? Like we look at food as entertainment. Like this is my daughter. I love her. She's 13 and her love language is <laughs> food, right? If we're going on vacation, if we're going on a road trip, if it's like a random Sunday, she wakes up, she's like, what are we going to eat today? <laughs> Where are we going to go to eat? Um, and that, you know, it's a source of like, you know, fun and entertainment for her. And that, you know, is something that a lot of, of, of adults, you know, kind of fall into that trap too. But really, you know, our ancestors looked at food. Can it get me through a hunt? Can it get me through a hike or a trek? You know, am I going to sleep tonight if I have enough food or not enough food? So, so, you know, it's not necessarily just like these specific ingredients, but it's also, 
um, just the, the way that you're thinking about it, like your food is supposed to be fuel. It can help you do your workouts and have a positive and healthy mood, right? Have energy throughout the day. So it's another what like that's kind of a more ancestral and holistic way to look at, at food instead of like as other or like, you know, demon or bad. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I think that's that's always why it's a really great place to start. Right. You not only have to look at what somebody's eating, but also their relationship with food. And, you know, it's not just that it has to be um, fuel for you, but if for some cultures it is communal and there is something else to that. But when you understand how the food affects your body, then it, you can look at other parts of your life, like your rest, your exercise. So I'd love to get into that aspect of it. But I do want to say hello to all the people who've joined us today. It looks like we have quite a few people so far. Thank you so much, uh, Lori, Jessica, Eza, for commenting. Um, make sure you guys stay till the end of the show because we do have a gluten-free diet handout that we're going to go through and actually show you how to use. Um, but if you can't stay, make sure you tap, uh, <laughs> comment the word tap in the comments and we'll send you that diet handout anyway. Um, so let's move on to rest. Rest is the second letter mm -hmm. in dress and mm -hmm. it's really more important than most people give it credit for, right? <laughs> Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, you know, so many practitioners, um, you know, know that there's no diet or supplement that can outdo a, a, you know, a good night's rest. Getting seven to eight hours of quality sleep should be of primary importance for you on your, on your wellness journey. Um, and this is another way that we've just kind of like lost touch with with what we used to do, right? As a, as a culture, um, whereas it was almost like a like a hollow time, like the sun goes down, you have a little bit of like you know rest time, you spend time in community with family and friends, and um, then it's then it's time for bed, right? And we artificially stimulate our environment, and and what this does, you know, is you lose touch with your circadian rhythms. You you don't realize that your body's asking you for a rest or for sleep. You know, you've drank coffee all day long. You've been on your screen until 1130. And then you wonder why you can't get to sleep at night, right? And your body's like, well, I still think it's 12 p.m. So I'm having trouble falling asleep, right? Um, but just, again, listening to those cues and and figuring out when does your body need rest and, and not just bedtime, Jess. You know, uh, a, a lot of women, men too, tend to, you know, have a, a lull in the afternoon. And some traditional cultures have, you know, afternoon naps, just part of what they do. Um, on a trip one time to a little island in Greece, my husband and I were trying to look for um, lunch and we couldn't find any restaurant that was open because everyone was at home taking a nap. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, you know, every, they realize, okay, I get tired in the afternoon. So instead of pushing through it and then later being angry and frustrated and sleepier, you know, earlier, um, I'm just going to honor my body's natural rhythms and take a nap. So that's what I encourage you to do and do with your clients. You guys who are listening, um, there's, you know, something that happens like for everyone, somewhere between like 6, 7, 8 p.m., your body pushes out what we call a sleep wave, right? So that's when you start to feel like you're switching over into your parasympathetic nervous system. You might start yawning. Your body gets a little bit more tired and is naturally preparing itself for bed, for rest. But if you're fighting that with more coffee and more screen time and more work, um, you know, then, you, then you've lost the crest of that sleep wave that your body's been preparing you to ride. And it can really start messing with your circadian rhythms and and your and your sleep itself so um i again just encourage you adhere to your body's natural cues right yeah so yeah i, yeah. <laughs> I think that's fantastic and again goes back to listening to yourself learning how you speak but i loved that story about greece because as a culture they are listening to how they work right and it's built into the culture so everybody stops working at a certain time. Everyone, I, I know the same thing happens in Mexico where they call it the siesta hour. <laughs> yeah, yes. And it's just, you know, late afternoon, everyone's had a big lunch and you just kind of chill out and then they'll open again in the evening. Um, but I love that it's built into the culture and that's something you can definitely build into your life and help your clients build into their lives also. It's just honoring that and making sure that they're not overdoing it right because that's what we see where disease comes in is when we overdo things and we don't listen to our body a hundred percent yeah and i think i mean if you could interview 
all, you know, every single client on your roster. I think that every single client who's coming to a functional practitioner or health coach is going to have an issue with their rest. We just don't know when to shut off. We can keep going. And so we do keep going. And really, like you said, just that sets the stage for this, you know, metabolic chaos, as we call it at FDN, where now all sorts of rhythms of your body are off. And that starts to manifest itself in, in you know, imbalances like diseases, um, you know, autoimmune illnesses, insomnia, you know, just chronic infections um, because your body hasn't gotten a chance to, to rest and repair. So yeah, we do really advocate for honoring those natural rhythms. So the next part of this is going into exercise, right? This is where you can really push your body, but sometimes it's not okay to push your body too much. Isn't that right? <laughs> so right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just know where you're at. It is okay to start low and slow. Um, but you know, my desire for every client and probably your desire for every client is just to become committed to movement. And that's again, what our ancestors did. They had to move throughout the day. I actually had an ad on like Instagram for this like six way chair. It was like a chair that's ergonomically designed for every position you want to lounge around every single day. in. I'm like, oh man, that actually looks really cozy, but <laughs> it's better for me if I'm like, you know, standing up or walking on my treadmill, the body is designed to move. Like we're ambulatory creatures. And so to stop and suppress those natural urges for movement can also really disrupt the, the rhythms of your body. Um, but you got to make it, you know, an actionable goal, right? You don't want to run like a 5k if you've just been coming from like couch potato, which is totally fine. Um, you know, you just want to start small. Maybe you can walk 3000 steps a day or 5000 steps a day. And maybe you hate exercise in general. That's okay, too. Um, one of our family's favorite things to do is go out twice a week and we play ultimate frisbee, not disc golf ultimate frisbee um and and we just have a great time and so honoring that natural like just desire of human to play is a really great way to get you know to get your wiggles out to get your exercise in and and to not make it a stress for your body because you know we don't want to be purposely stressing the body unless you're like training for a competition and you're trying to like lift and whatnot that's fine too but just for the average human who wants to live a a, a healthy life incorporate some play in your life and just see, you know, how much better you feel, how much better you sleep, how much better your mood is. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, I always love that. I think that, you know, they always say uh, the child at heart, right? Like you have to honor that child. And as we become adults and we have responsibilities and then we get families and we have to pay mortgages and we have jobs, you know, sometimes you forget that you have that little child inside that the whole reason that you wanted to become an adult was so that you could do fun things <laughs> so that you could, you could have the, the freedom to do so. And you, a lot of people forget that um, with my boyfriend and I, you know, our biggest thing is that we have enough money and time now, not only just to spend time with each other, but we love comic books. We collect toys, you know, we sit out by the pool, we play with our neighbors, like, it, it's just such a, a more in, uh, enjoyable life. And as we, last year, we moved from Los Angeles to Austin, Texas to get a slower paced life. Like mm -hmm. with everything that was going on, we realized like, what are we, what are we rushing around for? And everything that happened in 2020 really put things into perspective. I'm sure for a lot of people, for one, you could slow down a little bit. You could work from home, spend more time with your family and really cultivate the type of life that you want while you are still doing the things that you were responsible for. And I would hope that a lot of people out there took that to heart. Um, as practitioners, like we have to walk the talk but so that we can show that to our clients. So if we're workaholics and busy, busy trying to make that money and get those clients, you know, sometimes that can come across um, a little disingenuous, but if we're, you know, if we're on social media marketing ourselves and showcasing a little bit of our, our personal life and how much fun we have <laughs> doing what we do, I think it really helps somebody else feel comfortable to take a little bit of a step back and slow down and maybe have a little bit of fun in their life. You know, it's weird that you have to kind of teach people how to have fun again but it's so important. And I think with exercise, I love when you can find an activity that doesn't feel like you're stuck in the gym for 30 minutes and you're you know, on a treadmill in a box and running a, a 5K just, try, just to do it. 
But like, yeah. if you can take a walk outside, if you can find an activity with your family that does get you movement, that's just as good. Sometimes it's better. Right. Well, there's lots of research published on that, that neat and non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the fact that your body's metabolism is actually boosted when you're moving throughout the day, instead of just expending a bunch of your energy on, let's say a 30 to 45 to 60 minute workout one time a day, and then being so exhausted that you just have to sit the rest of the day. So, you know, it's that purposeful kind of constant movement that really number one is ancestral and number two is is really much better metabolically. So one other tip I have, this is something I, I tell all my clients to do. We actually had a trampoline challenge in one of my group coaching um, uh, classes and it was so much fun. I just had everybody get a $40 rebounder off of Amazon and you try to bounce on your trampoline for an hour a day. And this, this, you know, you can watch a show, you can listen to a podcast. If I don't have to be speaking on a meeting, sometimes I'm muted and I'm bouncing on my trampoline because we're all busy. You know, you, you, you might not have an hour or two to like go out and play something or go out and walk for two hours. But if you can incorporate some of these things into your natural rhythms of the day, um, you will see, you know, it pays dividends for your energy, mood and metabolism. Okay, so I I love the trampoline thing because I actually got a trampoline, um, <laughs> and I I had a, a goal of ten minutes every day, and then it became so fun that I was in there for twenty minutes or thirty minutes, and and it made such a big difference just to go in there and I'm just hopping around. We have a TV in our gym and like listening to music, talking on the phone. Like there's so many things you could do, um, but it was definitely my favorite thing that I've added in during quarantine. <laughs> Totally, totally. It's so much fun. And it really like it, it's a lymphatic drainage process too. So all that the toxins and waste that your body's building up throughout the day, you actually have to be proactive in getting rid of that. The body doesn't necessarily just drain lymph for you. And so it's a really great way if you're struggling with things like, you know, cellulite or, you know, build up in your in your lymph nodes, right? Or feeling like you're getting, getting sick all the time. Do a little bit of this lymphatic drainage and it's way more fun than just like sitting there and trying to like drain your sinuses, you know. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Um, so we're getting kind of close to our time and I really want to make sure we go through the diet handout, but I'm just going to touch really quickly. And this is more that you can learn if you're not already an FDN and you're interested in getting more training. This is where FDNs really, really shine in our training and how we help our clients is in stress reduction and supplementation. With stress reduction, we're not just looking at like ways to reduce your stress, but like internally, how can we find places for healing opportunities through lab testing? Um, and that's, it's a huge part of what we do and what we train. Um, and then supplementation as well. Like how can you supplement a client if you don't know what's going on with them? So when we talk about dress, there's a reason that it's in that order too. We start with diet, then talk about rest, exercise, and then we really dig into stress management, stress reduction, and then look at all of that so that we can help them supplement better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every single thing we talked about today are ways that you can remove some of those stressors, modern stressors from your body. But you're absolutely right, Jess. What sets us apart as FDNs is that we are trained in these cutting edge functional lab tests. And you know some of the biggest stressors in the body are hidden and can be uncovered by these functional labs that go much deeper than traditional labs. We are not doctors. We don't diagnose, treat, or prescribe. We just facilitate the ordering of these labs. And then um, we educate. And that's like Weston A. Price said, like that's that's what we do. We, we coach and we teach. Um, we don't diagnose. But there's a lot of power in learning your body's biofeedback and something we can do through testing, you know, um, stool and the urine and looking at hormone and gut dysfunction and intestinal permeability and food sensitivities. I mean, gathering up all that modern data is really exciting. And as much as I love ancestral living, I am obsessed with the data that we can get from the functional lab tests we get to run. And this is where we see, you know, really those hidden stressors, the, the covered stressors um, start to dissipate and we address them one by one. And on that note, as you were saying, Jess, like you don't just take supplements willy nilly. Like I'm sure I probably have $5,000 worth of crappy supplements from the last 15 years that are just like sitting in a, you know, dump somewhere because I, I didn't know what to use for my, my body. I didn't use my body's biofeedback. I just didn't know. So, you know, you guys watching the show, either becoming an FDN or getting to work with an FDN, you have, you have that power and accessibility to um, get that, that feedback for yourself and then really, you know, work with an FDN to 
get a, a customized supplement protocol put together based on the, the evidence um, that your body's giving back. So for sure, Jess. Awesome. All right, guys. So we're at the end of our show and I really want to spend the next few minutes talking about this gluten-free diet handout that we're going to give you. All you have to do is type the word tap in the comments below and we'll message you that so you can download it for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And this is exactly what you're going to be getting. So you want to go through this real quick with me, Jennifer, and just kind of explain to people how they can actually use this with their clients. Yep. I love this handout because it educates people and then it gives them practical solutions on what to do to remove gluten from their lives. And so I do always go through this, this education piece because people are like, well, what, what is gluten? Is it bread? And I'm like, well, yes. And you know, there's a little bit more. So we go into the gliadin protein and people are more um, likely to adhere to what you suggest for them if they understand it. So, you know, going through why gluten is harmful and really it's for everyone. You can see that there on the handout. Gluten is a highly inflammatory substance for everyone, um, no matter what you're dealing with, right? Um, and, and getting some of that back up there from, you know, peer reviewed journal articles and talking about the role of stress and, and even, you know, autoimmune disease um, when gluten is at play um, can be really helpful for people to buy into some of these things you're asking them to do. And on the, the right hand side, you know, I'll go through that checklist, common symptoms include, and we go through, you know, are you suffering from any of these or many of these? If it's, you know, three or more on the checklist, then odds are you're, you're gluten sensitive and we need to start removing that from, from your diet. So on page two, Jess, you know, we've got this really practical guide for you to use and for you to use with your clients. It's a gluten-free food list. How easy is that? Um, it tells you kind of, there are some lab tests you can run to confirm this. So it's kind of unnecessary if you're dealing with those symptoms um, and tells you, you know, you can't be a little bit gluten-free just like um, I think it's Tom O'Brien says you can't be a little bit pregnant, right? You can't be a little bit gluten free. <laughs> so you got to pull all these back from your diet. But you know, what I, what I like to tell with clients is we don't just want to remove, then we want to put something on in its place. Otherwise you're just kind of empty, right? So in, while we remove all the gluten containing grains, now you can add all these wonderfully healing, really ancestral foods like meat, poultry, fish, eggs, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds, right? Um, and, and it shows you specifically what to avoid and what you can add into a diet, right? You don't want to be super restrictive. Have some rice and quinoa, have some corn. And milk, right? <laughs> I love that. And I love that about FDN is that we not only teach you and, and train you, but we give you practical solutions and ways to help clients, you know, and you help yourself too in the process, which is always so important. Again, because FDNs walk the talk. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is such a great guide and so easy, not just for you to be able to explain, but for a client to also go back to and look and to keep and have reference. They can take it with them to the grocery store. They can show it to their family. They can give it to whoever it is that does their groceries if it's not them. Um, mm -hmm. And it just makes it so much easier. And if you guys are looking to get this for yourself, all you have to do is just comment tap in the comments below and we will send you a message you can download yourself you can always go back and rewatch this so that you can see how jennifer explained how to use it with clients or you can even send them this video <laughs> and the <Yeah>. replay <laughs> and um, maybe that could help them with a little bit of compliance as well so that was super fun and i'm glad we were able to show that today Awesome. Me too. That's great. You you can tell how jazzed I get about ancestral living, Jess. So thanks for letting me come on and talk about it. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Thank you so much um, for all of you still hanging in there with us today. This is Health Coach Tip Tuesday. Every Tuesday, we talk about tips, tools, and resources to help health coaches um, with their practices. Uh, we are on every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, live on Facebook and YouTube. And we post replays on Instagram uh, later in the week. Today, we were talking about tapping into ancestral health with your clients. And we have an amazing giveaway, which is our gluten-free diet handout. Um, we just went through and showed you how to use it, what it looks like. And if you guys are looking to download it for yourself, just uh, type the word tap in the comments below and we will message it to you so you can download it. Awesome. Well, that was such a fun show. And so many great tips in there. So I hope people go back and rewatch this over and over again because, you know, you can't um, encapsulate everything the first time you watch it. So I look forward to any of the comments that come later. But thank you, everybody who joined us.
us on the show today. Thank you, Jennifer. Is there any last um, pearls of wisdom you want to throw out to people before I let you go for today? Sure. Um, yeah, don't forget, you only have one life. So have fun. Right? Do things that bring you joy every day because there's always going to be time to work. But, um, you know, no one ever got to the end of their life and said, I wish I would have worked more. Right. <laughs> All right totally. Thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Jennifer. Okay. Bye everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday.